my friends, it's Nick, the ASMR nerd, and today we are playing with power, a power washer, that is. Today we are playing power wash simulator, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a very satisfying kind of meditative simulator about cleaning dirty things with a power washer. And it really builds on that. There's a career mode and there's different kinds of power washers and attachments and the cleaning fluids and whatnot. You can earn money and all that stuff as you progress through the levels, but the important thing is that it's surprisingly compelling and absolutely satisfying. And I've played it uh, a little bit. I played it um, on a Twitch stream, I think last year, or maybe earlier. I don't know. I think it was in early access at the time. But um, it, it was really cool. What I played it was very satisfying. So, uh, recently, uh, it had a big update. I believe it released on uh, PlayStation 4 and 5. And also, it got this huge update, which includes uh, Doom Raider themed levels. As you can see, uh, we have here Croft Manor. And uh, I think this DLC is free for anybody who owned the game before the update. Um, and it's, uh, I think, five levels, I believe, um, all themed around Croft Manor. Um, which is, of course, um, Lara Croft's family residence. So uh, I thought this was just such a weird crossover, uh, but also really kind of fun. So uh, today we're going to clean the facade of Croft Manor, or at least we'll clean part of it. I doubt we'll finish it because, dang, it looks dirty AF. Um, it's grimy, super grimy, but that's okay. We'll see what we can do. Uh, a message from one Winston Smith. Um, I've been requested by my esteemed employer, Miss Lara Croft, to commission a cleaner for the exterior of her residence, Croft Manor, and I've acquired your details from a mutual friend. She is soon to host a charity fundraiser for artifact repatriation, and wishes for the manor to be looking tip-top for all her esteemed international guests. As you'll no doubt discover, from the odd buffed brick here and there. I have attempted the task myself, but to no avail. It is simply beyond my advancing years. Please note, the roof has only recently been retiled and won't require any of your attention. Miss Croft is currently recuperating in Egypt after being set upon. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, but we'll be back soon to give your handiwork the once over. Well, we certainly would not want to disappoint Miss Croft. So, um, we will do our best. Uh, as you can see, we have, you know, different uh, equipment and attachments and cleaners and things to do the job with. So, I think we're set. Let's give it a shot. Oh, we're gonna make $400 for this whole job. That seems like a very poor compensation for what appears to be an insane amount of work, but oh well. <laughs> we'll do it for the glory. So, um, here we are. Um, we, of course, have our, our power washer, uh, the Prime Vista Pro, which is a good all-rounder professional duty pro 
pressure washer. It's our only option here. We have several extensions available uh, from the stubby gun, which is no extension, to uh, the extra long extension. Each one improves the range of the washer, but can be used close to surfaces. We'll start with the stubby gun, I guess. Um, we have a lot of nozzle options, including various types of sprays, as well as um, a soap nozzle uh, with which we can use our cleaning liquids. But we do have limited cleaning liquids, so let's start off with just the regular old nozzle and save the cleaning liquids for the really stubborn stuff. You might have noticed we have a glass cleaner, which obviously will save for the windows, and a multi-purpose cleaner, which we could use anywhere, but we'll just skip for now. Um, this game does have some pleasingly ASMR sound effects, I have to say. Let's start with a 15 degree nozzle and no cleaning liquid. So, um, man, this is an imposing, imposing facade, <laughs> and it's really dirty. Um, I guess we're gonna have to go up the scaffolding to reach the upper levels. Um, I wonder if we can get onto that ledge and go around on that ledge. That seems terribly unsafe, but maybe it's doable from up there. We also, of course, have a stepladder, which we can use uh, to get a little extra height. Um, well, well, this place is over here for now, but let's, let's start with uh, one of these planters. How about that? It is covered in ooh, slimy moss, dirt streaks, and grime in varying proportions. Let's see what we can do about that. Oh, Winston has messaged us, says, I trust you have everything you need to begin your work. I'll be sure to furnish you with tea and biscuits just as soon as I escape a eh? minor predicament. It's nothing to worry about, by the way. All right, Winston. If you say so. Miss Croft likes to send me these challenges from time to time. <laughs> Otherwise, one can get rather dull. If you say so. If you say so, Winston. So, um, this is the gist of the gameplay. It's, you know, despite all the attachments and stuff, it's, it's really quite simple. And, um, it's mostly just about kind of vibing <laughs> and getting all the grime off these surfaces, which, you know, is rewarding in its own right because it just looks so much better once clean. And, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of challenge that I have encountered so far, uh, except for there was a level with like a, uh, like a lattice, kind of crisscrossed fence that I remember. That thing was a real pain in the butt because you had to get all the surfaces. Um, one handy feature is you can press tap and it'll flash where it's dirty. So we got a little bit of dirt on this corner still. Sometimes it can't be, or sometimes it's not so obvious. How's the whole, the whole matter flashes? Oh dear. This place is gonna look so good when we're done. I think we finished the base of the planter, pretty much. Um, but we need to gain a little 
light uh, to sort of get into the crevices up there. So let's do this. Let's do this. Where's the jump? The water sound effects are normally a fair bit louder, but I didn't want to blow your guys' ears out. You know, it's this an ASMR video after all, so hopefully, hopefully it's, uh, oh wow, we have to get these, uh, right around the top in here. That's tricky. Right around the rim of the planter, you see. Oh, nice. Okay, so there is a little bit of leeway. Um, if there's a couple of spots left, um, it will just say it's 100% completed and be clean, like so. Which is actually really nice, because sometimes it's really hard to tell where those last bits of remaining grime are. Let's go to the other planter. There's a, a speed running scene for this game that feels like the logical, you know, logical next step, right? Like, you know, on its own, it's a pretty zen experience, pretty chill, pretty meditative, but, you know, people are always gonna make stuff competitive, some people, anyway, and I betcha, uh, I betcha, there is totally a speedrunning competitive scene for this game, which would actually maybe be kind of compelling to watch, I don't know, do you, any of you guys know about it, <laughs> I might look it up after this, because that sounds kind of fascinating, now that I think about it. what the strats are. You can see in the top left there, um, you know, the dirt level going down uh, when we're spraying, you know, an item. Okay. on this planter. But again, I guess we won't have to do the whole thing. Just enough to do that ding. It's a very satisfying ding sound as well. Honestly, the whole game is just satisfaction. Satisfaction. Oh no. The whole fountain over here is dirty too. Oh, that won't do. That won't do at all. Oh, what a mess, you guys. Well, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. But let's, uh, we got some large areas to cover here, so let's pull out our 40 degree nozzle. Um, which covers more area, but does, uh, impact the water pressure, of course. But, um, I think for large surfaces like this, it's totally worth it, so. We also don't have all that much range. But we could extend it with the, uh, you know, the attachments. I honestly don't know know what the trade-off is here. If it's more efficient on large flat surfaces like this to use a wider angle uh, nozzle like this that's slower 
due to the lower water pressure, or if it's better to do a uh, narrower nozzle with more water pressure, um, you know, that doesn't cover as much area, but that goes faster. I would expect that the designers would, you know, design it such that it balances out more or less, but it's difficult to say, isn't it? Again, I'm sure somebody has quantified all this. The speedrunners, they need their optimal strats. So. I also like that, uh, you know, we have unlimited water and no hose. It just comes out of thin air somehow. Yeah, this fountain's gonna be a long haul, because we got a lot of surfaces, don't we? We've done, I don't know, maybe a eighth of the top surface. This is what we signed up for. In some ways, actually, it kind of makes more sense for me to just walk back and forth over these surfaces rather than use my mouse to, you know, look around because this, this is a very even means of sort of ensuring the coverage is smooth and even. interesting to see like how exactly they divide up the parts of the structures or objects like this is fountain outer wall I guess that's specifically this outer wall because we've almost finished it so if we do this oh no that's part of the lantern plinth okay so what else counts towards this outer wall 
feel like we've done a pretty good job of it here. But maybe we need to get more along here. It says we're still not done. Oh, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's up here. Yeah. See, now this is the mountain top. see anything. Huh. Well, we're missing something there anyway. We'll have to come back to it. That's what I mean about sometimes the game can be really picky. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, oops, no, we can't rotate. I forgot about that. Uh, let's pull out the mid-range nozzle there. They, they really went all out. Like, this is a simulator. That, oh, nice. Um, in that the, uh, you know, the sound changes. They're simulating the pressure, obviously. Pressure changes. Uh, all kinds of stuff. I should really have brought my stepladder over here. Nice. Okay. It's gotta be just somewhere in the cracks here that we're missing on this outer wall. We're on the bottom somehow. I don't know. Oh well. Yeah, this one really is a lot faster, isn't it? I should really be using it. Kind of feels better. Let's do the outer wall here. 
Let's see if we have more luck with this outer wall. This simulator obviously retains some of the tedium of the task, but it makes the tedium into a sort of meditative undertaking. You know, much like Euro Truck Simulator 2 does, um, ETS 2, um, you know, you have long drives that could take, you know, an hour of real world time or what have you, but, um, you know, they compress down Europe in a way that makes uh, the landscape um, very sort of ever-changing, so you're always seeing new stuff out the window, and, you know, it takes the appealing parts of that experience and puts them front and center. Once again, we're missing quite a lot of something on this outer wall. this is all outer wall. I think we got all that over here though. Oh, there was a little bit I think we'd missed on this one. Let's just go along here like this and see if maybe we can get some bits that we missed. Must be almost done this plinth. Bingo. Such a satisfying ding. Oh, it's a tad loud. Might see if I can figure out how to turn that down for next time if I do a video with this again. Don't want you to be alarmed by the ding. Okay, very good. Somewhere, we're getting somewhere. <laughs> this whole video is just gonna be, just gonna be this fountain. All right, this surface I really do think benefits from the the larger nozzle. Uh, and what about? Let's uh, extend, extend a little bit. That will allow us to reach a little further here.
think this game would be a very good podcast game. Just like Euro Truck Simulator 2, where you could just, uh, you know, pop on a podcast or an audiobook, for that matter, and sort of do this mindlessly while you listen to something. Some might argue that sort of defeats the zen-like aspect of it, because now you're distracting your mind with something else, and I could, I could buy that. I guess it depends on what you want out of the experience. I will admit that I do have trouble just letting my mind be idle. <laughs> I like to always have something to entertain it. And so when I'm doing something like this, my tendency is to want to put on something like a podcast or an audiobook. But the fact that I struggle with just letting my mind be idle probably means that I need to, you know, more than anything, I need to give it time to just be, be empty, be idle. I will say, many of my best ideas do occur in the shower. And I've heard that this is a, a known phenomenon. And um, I've always assumed it's because, you know, your mind is idle in the shower. You're just kind of on autopilot doing your routine. And your brain is free to think about whatever. And in doing so, sometimes it makes good connections or comes up with cool stuff that you wouldn't otherwise uh, if you were constantly cramming stuff into your brain. I think in many ways that's the essence of creativity is, you know, you fill your brain with all kinds of stuff by experiencing life and absorbing media and, and whatnot. But then you give your brain time to to ruminate on that, to digest it, to, you know, turn it over and look at it from all kinds of different angles. And then, you know, your brain will kind of come up with novel ways to put those things together or modify them or take them in a different direction. And if you don't give your brain breathing room to to do that, that second part, the part where it recombines stuff in novel ways, then I think, you know, you struggle with creativity. So you need both, you know, you, you need to consume, but then you also need to let your brain breathe to generate stuff. I don't know, this is probably all like well-established psychological theory, but it's not really my wheelhouse. I, um, I did take some psychology classes for my first two years at university, actually, and they were really fascinating. At one point, I thought that I might want to continue on that road, but, um, but I just didn't really see a career down that route that I wanted to pursue, so I pivoted into biology. that sort of led me into environmental science. Which really has nothing to do with anything that we're doing here right now, but <laughs> these are the, the winding paths, the wandering route that we take when we're just power washing. Maybe I should have chosen to do the facade first because this is pretty boring. At least the facade of the house is more varied visually. But you know what? It's going to feel really good to have this fountain done. 
and then we can move on to the house. And to be honest, y'all are here for boring, really, right? <laughs> You're here for something to chill out to. Something to maybe just have on in the background while you're working. Or maybe something that just gives you sort of a familiar sound or a friendly presence while you're falling asleep. That's what I largely use ASMR for. So, I hope it helps. Howdy, friend. <laughs> Here is your friendly voice. Friendly presence. Sometimes that's all it takes, you know. Sometimes it's just nice to just have something else to focus on or something to feel like you're, you know, hanging out with a buddy. Well, I appreciate you all. I appreciate you hanging out with me in some way. It works the same for me because, you know, I'm sitting here technically on my own right now. But I know all of you are going to see this. I know many of you are going to hear this. And so it's kind of like I'm hanging out with you and chatting with you. I can imagine y'all here. It's sort of therapeutic for me in its own way. I think many ASMR creators would agree. I've always maintained that, you know, no, no matter how busy um, or demanding, you know, the channel can be sometimes, it's good for me um, because these videos and making this content a um, can be you know creatively rewarding um, depending on the content <laughs> um, but B it forces me to slow down it forces me to do something like this something more meditative something more zen and to take my time with something excellent Um, which I think is healthy for me. Because otherwise, you know, I'd be, I don't know, doing something probably less zen. Well, I might be doing something equally zen. I might still be playing this, actually. <laughs> or Euro Truck or something, but I might be doing something else. That's somewhat less chill. I am. I know I, I benefit from giving myself reasons. Nice. Giving myself reasons to slow down. Okay, how are we doing here? We got this back edge, which um, is already actually partially a little bit done. And then we've got this top. Let's finish off the top here uh, because that's been probably the most tedious part of this fountain. I think after this, it's actually going to get a fair bit quicker. And, um, and then we'll go finish the outside walls. And then we'll start focusing on the inside portions of the fountain. One thing I'd like to know is if there's an auto spray option because I'm holding down my mouse button for all this spraying and it's actually getting kind of tiring <laughs> because, you know, there's a lot of spraying going on and it's kind of continuous. I bet you there is an auto spray key but I don't know what it is. Oh, there, I literally just found it. It's right-click. 
Much better, much better, much better. I should have been doing that this whole time. Definitely makes it less fatiguing. You don't want to get carpal tunnel with your simulated, simulated power washing. just let go of the mouse entirely and just let my left hand do, do the work for a bit <laughs> as we walk back and forth. I wonder if there's a slower, like a way to move slower. I know we can crouch, but that's, well actually that does make you move slower. So that kind of allows you to adjust that. You can also go prone, <laughs> but that's not going to help us here. I think we still have the range extension on, which you probably don't need, but oh well. Mountain top is so close to done, you guys. Look at, look at, look at, look at, this better be it. Ha! Ah. Ha! Ah. Well, that feels great. Look at how clean that is. Oh, beautiful. All right, let's do uh, the outer walls here. And um, switch back to the 25 degree nozzle here. Because that seems to come pretty quick. Although we still haven't quite figured out what we're missing on these outer walls, have we? treasures, murdering bad guys, 
running from dinosaurs. You know. It is very satisfying though once you've once you've got it all done. When you get that ding and you can gaze upon your work. Proud with the, the job you've done, secure in the knowledge that you have purged every last speck of crime. That's a pretty great feeling. And you all get to experience that vicariously <laughs> through this video. Uh, although, I, I, I mean, the game is really great. Like, I do recommend you pick it up if this looks appealing to you. This isn't a sponsored video or anything. I just bought the game myself back in early access and saw that there was an update and thought that you guys might enjoy this. So, but, um, do recommend it if you like this sort of thing. Some of you might really love it. Others of you might just be like, what the hell? Why? <laughs> Why would I ever, <laughs> ever do this? <sighs> that feels good. You know, it's funny, it's... You forget how loud the water gun is until you stop it, and then suddenly it's like, blessed silence. But I did turn it down quite a bit from the default. It's way down. Alright, let's keep going. No rest for the wicked. Got a whole mansion to clean after this. A whole front facade at least. It's really grimy down here. Even our 25 degree nozzle is uh, a little slow. So much algae. I guess it makes sense though. This is where the where the water was. nicest looking game ever, but I do like the wetness effects, you know, on the surfaces. Get that nice kind of specular shader with the, the wetness and the drips and the little uh, kind of whooshing effect going off where you're spraying. Some stubborn patches here. Okay, let's do, uh, so that I'm not looking up and down quite so much, let's switch back to the 45 degree, or 40 degree nozzle, and let's rotate, and let's do this, and then what if we just do this, and just like really slowly pan across. sort of works. <laughs> but we actually can't quite get the distance required. Can't quite get far enough to, to get this all in one sweep. The fountain inner wall, so is this all one piece or is each side its own? Like the outer wall. I think each side must be its own. how quickly that uh, bar is going down. And unlike the outer wall, we don't have to get the underside of the, uh, you know, the detailing. At least I don't think we do. I don't see any underside to get. Nice. Yeah, that's definitely a little more forgiving.
I've seen some other ASM artists play this game in videos. I know Jubilee played it, I think, last year. Um, Jubilee Whispers, whom, if you don't know, um, is an amazing ASMR creator. <laughs> uh, lots of fantastic gaming ASMR. You probably know Jubilee. She has been around for ages. She's got an amazing channel. I've collabed with her a few times. Uh, she's delightful. But, um, nice. Um, I've seen others playing this as well because it is, it is a really good ASMR game. You know, it's got those ASMR-ish kind of sound effects. It's got the, uh, satisfaction of seeing dirty things get clean. You've kind of got visual and auditory ASMR of a sort. And I, I think the developers are aware of that. Um, I think they... I, I can't remember what exactly, but there's something... Oh, Winston's calling or texting. Perhaps it might be judicious to say a few pertinent points whilst you work. It might be judicious. Okay. What was that? Miss Croft is a quite extraordinary woman. Indeed she is. She's, uh, taken more, you know, uh, of a beating than most people will ever experience in their lifetimes, but she keeps going. She demands exacting standards, both from herself and from others. Oh, I see how this is. He's letting me know that Laura is not going to be pleased if it's not perfect. If you excel, you'll meet with a generous side. What does that even mean? Do I get a bonus? That'd be nice. If not, well, Miss Croft has an extensive and colorful vocabulary. Also guns. Not that I expect her to shoot the power wash man for an, uh, you know, underperforming job, but you never know with Lara Croft. I mean, she has to be at least a little bit of a psychopath to do what she does, right? Truth be told, I've not played um, either of the, la the latest two games. Um, was it Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Rise of the Tomb Raider? Um, I played some of the, you know, the Tomb Raider reboot, I guess it was. The first in the most recent trilogy. But that was quite some time ago. And I've played bits and pieces of the older games. Tomb Raider 1 and 2, I guess. I know, and uh, Angel of Darkness, was that one? Um, I don't know, I've, I've played a smattering of, of the series over the years, but I'm not like the biggest Tomb Raider fan, but it is a, a fixture in gaming, so I respect it for that. It's not really for a lack of desire, like I actually would like to play, um, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It's just a lack of time, like so many other games. <laughs> he says as he plays Power Wash Simulator. I've got too much power washing and Euro trucking to do, you guys. How am I supposed to find time to play Tomb Raider? Cargo ain't gonna deliver itself. Things ain't gonna wash themselves. I jest, but like that actually is kind of a problem that I run into is that I do tend to play, I don't know, a lot of mundane games or a lot of games that are just kind of maintenance games. You know, live service games where you log in and you, you do some stuff each day, but it's mostly just the idle accumulation of meaningless wealth or whatever, you know, or maybe you chip away at a long-term goal of some kind, but 
sort of more focused, story-driven games. I don't know. I enjoy them when I play them, but for whatever reason, they just kind of always take the back burner and then I never get around to them. Instead, I just spend my limited gaming time just spinning on the hamster wheel. I don't... I don't know. But I guess that's rewarding in its own way to my lizard brain. Feels like I'm making progress on something. Accomplishing something. And, you know, that's important too. Well, I mean, it's important in that, you know, you want to feel a sense of pride and accomplishment in your life, not that you really should be finding that solely in games, but, but I mean, if I'm going to spend my recreation time doing something, it's a fine way to spend it, I suppose. Where it gets problematic is when it starts to just feel like chores, and you start to resent it. I've been there too, where, you know, I've been playing a game just because I feel like I have to, because it's what I do. You know, it's just part of my routine, but at some point you find yourself asking, like, what am I doing? <laughs> Why am I doing this? If I'm not having fun with it, what's the point? If it just feels like work, what's the point? But I bet a lot of you have found yourselves there too. And sometimes that feeling, you know, comes and goes for a certain game as more content emerges or Maybe you just get sort of caught up in it again. Find some goals for yourself that are satisfying. But if it's uh, something that you're experiencing a lot with the game, you feel like you're beholden to the game, like you're working a second job, and you're not deriving enjoyment or satisfaction from it anymore, then, well, maybe it's time to play something else or do something else entirely. Gaming, of course, is not the only, the only way to spend your free time. Okay, um, we're doing pretty well here. Um, I think we're, you know, we've almost done a quarter of the cleaning, actually, in this level. Believe it or not, 23%. By the time we finish this fountain, we'll be over a quarter, I think. So that's kind of nice. But clearly we're not finishing this in this video. <laughs> clearly this is going to require... Going to require multiple sessions. Which of course I, I could... I could do another video with this game if, if you all really enjoy this and would like to see more. I often offer in my videos to do follow-ups um, and you know sometimes you find folks in the comments will say yes please more um, but follow-ups uh, are, are always a bit tricky um, because usually the first episode in a series or the first time I play a game you know um, will be the most viewed, and then after that it drops off pretty, pretty dramatically, usually. And I have always assumed that's just because, you know, you play a game, some people really like it, but most people are like, yeah, that's fine. They clicked on it out of the novelty, and they watched it out of the novelty, but they're not really invested in seeing more of it. So it's just the diehards that come back for subsequent episodes, and in some cases, Games like Thief, for example, or Stray, My Dear Taffers and Strays. Um, you know, I decide to keep going with it because I really want to, I really personally enjoy it a lot, or I really want to see it through. Um, but in other cases, it just feels like going back to a game, doing another video with it is not the best way to you know, satisfy the 
most of my viewers, I guess, <laughs> the largest number of community members. And of course, it's not all about the numbers, obviously, or else I wouldn't be doing stuff like playing Thief or whatever, but, um, but you know, I am in the business of <laughs> creating content for you guys, and I do want it to be stuff that you enjoy, or that the majority of people enjoy, so it's a balancing act, right? balancing act between, um, you know, trying to find what the majority will enjoy, but also indulging the people who, who are really enthusiastic about one particular game or series, and then also doing what I enjoy, because that's pretty critical too. I've been doing this for nearly 10 years now, and I would not be doing this still if I wasn't able to do what I enjoy, um, you know, at least the vast majority of the time. I've had a number of people ask me what what the key to, you know, the longevity of my channel or just a long-lived channel in general um, is, you know, and I, my answer is always, like, you have to do what you find fun, and if that means changing stuff up a bit, then go for it. Or if that means um, just doing the same stuff all the time, if that's what you enjoy, that's fine too. That's fine too. Whatever brings you joy in your content creation, you have to prioritize that. And not to the exclusion of everything else, but you do have to make it a priority. Just going around and making sure we've got the undersides of these ridges here, because that's what got us in trouble on the outside. And it looks like um, this pedestal does include the top, though. The top of the pedestal. So let's do that. We can probably uh, remove our extender here. Let's switch our 40 degree to 25 because we're doing some kind of finer work here. And then the last will of course be the fish statue. Or whale fountain statue. <laughs> it doesn't say one way or another. We don't have any closure. We don't get to know. indeed it can be a challenge to decide what kind of content to produce. For example, deciding to do this video, I had a, a number of different ideas um, and I settled on this one, but I could have done something else. Perhaps you would have enjoyed it more. Perhaps I would have enjoyed it more. Difficult to say. I thought about doing a Dead Space video. <laughs> that Dead Space remake just came out. People seem to be really loving it. I never played the original, but I am very intrigued by this remake. I do enjoy sort of a sci-fi survival horror. Obviously, not very ASMR, but in some ways that might make it more appealing. Then you could go with the gimmick, you know, the silly thumbnail or the silly title. Can I make this ASMR? I reckon I could. I was able to make Doom Eternal into ASMR. I suspect I could do Dead Space too. But I thought about it. I thought, is that really what best serves the majority of my audience? I don't think it would be. But maybe I'm wrong. You guys can correct me. Oh, nice. Alright. We are nearly there. Time to finish this fountain statue and then oh we've got we got something done. Um yeah you guys can feel free to correct me. <laughs> if if you would really like to see some dead space ASMR, you let me know. You can 
be difficult to anticipate what it is that you will all enjoy the most, because really, you are all not one person, of course. You are a multitude of people, a multitude of references, and uh, you watch my content for different reasons, you know? For some of you, it might be just strictly fall asleep. For others, you might just enjoy diverse and interesting ASMR content. But doing something like Dead Space ASMR style to me would be, you know, kind of a gimmick, right? People would watch it because it's funny, or they want to see if I'm able to do it. I'm able to turn it into something that's even remotely relaxing. And that's fine. Those videos can be fun, and they can do well enough. But I don't know that they're really serving my audience the best in terms of actually helping people sleep or relax. But every once in a while, they're, they're a lot of fun. And if I do genuinely make it relaxing enough, well, then I suppose that maybe it is genuinely serving you guys. At this point, I'm mostly just thinking out loud, <laughs> explaining some of my logic or my reasoning when I'm deciding what kind of content to create. Of course, there's lots of other stuff that comes into, you know, factors into my decisions too, but that's certainly part of it. There's something to be said for playing the popular games, you know, even on an ASMR gaming channel. The games that are doing well right now, that are in the news, that people are playing. If you can capture the zeitgeist, those videos do tend to do pretty well. People tend to watch them, even if they're not really the most ASMR appropriate game. Which is largely why I strongly considered the Dead Space video. Interesting. 
what we might have to do is go get our stepladder, bring it on over, see what we can do with it. We're getting there. But, uh, man, it is challenging here, isn't it? it up here, is it? Oh, there was one spot. I don't know if it's going to help us in the long run, but... Oh, come on. Where was that spot? I saw it. There. Oh, even though it lights up, it won't let me place it. Well, that's... That's unfortunate. I guess it's not work safe. You know? Oh, okay, alright. Okay, apparently this is legit. It does let us get a little bit more here, potentially. Gosh, we're so close. What else could we be missing on this fish statue, eh? seems silly. Like, I feel like this isn't the answer. <laughs> Maybe there's some stuff on the end of the tail that we can get from back here. Oh yeah, okay. A little bit. Let's, uh, let's extend. Let's go maximum range. Oh, it's so close. Oh, there's some a little bit along that side of the... It must be so very close. Curses. Sniping. 
Do you think that's possible? Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, let's maximize our pressure here. Let's go with the zero degree nozzle and the sniper rifle extension here. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Well, yeah, it looks like this is how we have to do this. We come up here and we, we can wander around this way. Also, not work safe in the slightest. There's no guardrails. We don't have a harness. This is not how this is to be done. But, you know, I feel like Lara would approve. You know, she's not the safest when it comes to her escapades, so... But look, look at our glorious fountain here, friends. Isn't it beautiful? With our stepladder on top of the fish's head. Let's just move that. Um, um, oh, so nice. So much better. What an improvement compared to what it was, anyway. I mean, it's just a straight-up improvement, not even compared to what it was. It is, it is clean, it is spotless, it is pristine. Okay, well, um, this video is probably very long. Uh, we are 30% done. <laughs> um, I feel like I cheated you. We didn't really actually do much of the manor itself, so let's do one more thing. Let's do the front doors, because I bet you these look really nice, all cleaned up. That shouldn't take too long. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Glorious. Yeah, you gotta wonder what the heck, what the heck happened to the manor here. Door hinge cleaned, okay. How did they let it get like this? This is pretty appalling, honestly. Pretty darn appalling. Excellent. A very good small door cleaned. Doorway taper. Uh, I reckon we're probably missing something on the top edge. So you can work on a job together. 
that would definitely make it go faster, but uh, even single player, you know, it's it's satisfying, right? It's nice to uh, just take some time to, like I said, give your brain some space to breathe, just chill out a little bit, and, uh, and enjoy some very satisfying power-washing action. Well, thank you all for joining me here uh, for this video. I hope I made the right choice in my choice of video for this week, and I hope that you enjoyed this, that you found it uh, interesting, a little bit entertaining, a little bit, but most of all, relaxing. And I look very forward to having you back here next time. Farewell for now, my friends. <laughs>